<laughs> I can see. Okay, bud. Okay. How you feeling, friend? Nervous. <laughs> Don't feel nervous. Let me turn some up. Kind of fan. Nerves better than my hat. <clears throat> So we did a good job. Oh my. All right, so welcome everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Vertical Just Podcast. I am your host today, Fire Starter, representing for the world famous Vertical Just. And I'm so excited to bring to you my special guest today, Ecstasy, y'all. Okay, how are you? <laughs> so for those of you who do not know, Ecstasy is one of our fabulous instructors here at Vertical Joe's. She's an executive at Vertical Joe's, but she's been so instrumental in our series program. In fact, she is the series coordinator. Um, our lap artist program has been super successful because of her and her wonderful husband. Okay, and their contribution to our lap artist program. Lap dance for lovers, y'all. You know, I've been single all 10 years. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't have a lap dance for lovers if I didn't have someone with a lover to throw it down. So I just want you to know that she's super special. Um, she's been with the studio since before we opened. So she is an honorary OG for Vertical Joe's. And um, I'm super excited to bring her to you today. So we're hanging out today actually at Vertical Joe's. It may not look like it, but we have been blessed by Sophie Lounge ATL, who created this amazing set for us. Okay, it used to be the Velvet Coochie Lounge, yes, okay? Exactly. But now it's, uh, I think it's the Juju, uh, Juju Lounge. Juju, you I know what like I mean? It, so I like I, I'm not sure, but I think that's the new name of it. And um, I love it, it's beautiful. It was created by Bonakai Designs and Diddy Emma's. Glow firm, all right. So, y'all give a big hand for them, all right. And, Ecstasy, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, well, I am Ecstasy, um, one of the senior instructors, as Fire started his mention here at the world famous Vertical Joe's. Um, dang, what is there to say? I think you know, I've certified in all things Vertical oh, Joe's. I'm, I'm, I'm okay, I'm, 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 Yes. Uh-huh. So 
uh, dang, I think I, I know there's more. I have lots of others. Um, but all things PDT, Vertical Joe's, yes. um, I'm taking over that program as well, being a coordinator Insane. for that. So, you know, you want to come teach. We got all the things for you. Ecstasy, you're so fabulous. I I love you. Um, I would invite you here today. I had to celebrate you because you mean Thank so you. much to me. Thank and I was thinking to myself, what if it's not recording? Let me, you, what if we're not recording? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, God, I'm recording. Okay, great. Woo, girl. I'm about to say. That was I, I didn't see that was the last was recording. I know. I guess it disappeared. Oh, my goodness. I was so we're good. We're good. Okay, we're, we're good. good. We're great. Okay. So at this time, I wanted to take a moment to just say thank you, Ecstasy. Oh, thank you. Come on, pop your collar. A toast to you. We celebrating you, y'all. Okay. Thank you. Celebrating you as well. No, we're celebrating you today, baby. This is all about my friend. Thank you so much for being so fabulous and blessing us with your energy for so many years. You could be anywhere and you chose to play with us. Yes. So I appreciate you. Cheers, my friend. Thank you. Woo! Mm -hmm. So we are gathered here today because. I had to pull over ecstasy one time, not just for myself, but for the entire world, y'all. So as you know, Vertical Joseph has been keeping it spicy for people, couples, for years, okay? In fact, in our grand opening in 2010, we did lap dance for lovers, you know? And everybody came out with a boo thing. We did a, a class with you and your boo thing, and then we also had a performance. So we've always been advocates about keeping it spicy at home, y'all. Ecstasy is fresh off of vacation <laughs> with her husband, Special K, 21 years, all right, of love and popping that thing, okay, you hear me? I need details, honey. I need all the details, because I, I always said, I'm gonna hurt somebody, Body son. son. Mm -hmm. I can't. I can't mm -hmm. wait. Okay, my future boobs. Ooh, whatever. He's out there. He's out there. He's out there. He's out there. Just wait. He's probably just, just afraid. Let me tell you. To reach out to you. God, God told him not to come for me yet. Okay. Okay. Because okay. I need to focus on okay. my millions and my mobile okay. energy. Okay. But maybe okay. he can help you build. Oh, oh, oh! He's he going to. You. He's gonna help you build. Okay. Ex, tell him to hurry up. Yeah, hurry up. Hurry up. Yes. Hurry up. Yes. Hurry up. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to hurt you. Okay. <laughs> so. I, for all of the beautiful couples out there, my single ladies out there, my single fellas out there, I want to take a moment to, one, give Exy her flowers because um, years and years and years of uh, monogamy, y'all are monogamous? Years and years of monogamy is hard, okay? Because, you know, we are in an environment of, you know, poly, open, everything. You know what I mean? Yes. So I'm too selfish for that. Oh, my goodness. By the way. I, I mean, I, I, it's so many reasons to be selfish. Oh, you know what I mean? Yes, yes. But, you know, when you hear all these things about, you know, women being, you know, um, so many women, so little men, so this, so that, people start to fall into it and not really feel like there's a one person that is like right for them. Yeah. So, y'all, we got to get these answers from ecstasy right now, all right? So let's start with, tell us about how you and Special K met. And how did you know that he was special? I know he laughed the draws off of you. I know he did. that. He did. I, I, I've he heard did. it multiple times he that did. he straight laughed the draws off of you. But when when y'all met mm -hmm. and um, you know he he approached you, like what what was that approach like? Okay. And I already know you know you said college. You know yes. what I'm saying you yes. was a hot girl. Yes. You know what I mean. <laughs> you are actually so, so, I was a nerd. You was a nerd. When I you, was when a you nerd. Your sorority. My senior year. Your senior year. Okay, yes. okay so you, but you, you was in, you was in progress. I was in progress. Okay, you was in progress. Yeah, he saw right. my potential. He saw the hot. As he said, he uh, saw my potential. Oh. Okay. All right. That's I'm the a, story he told. Okay. I'm a, I'm a shut up. I'm a shut up. Tell us your story. How mm -hmm. did you and Special K meet? Okay. How did you know that you wanted him to? Well, after he left the draws off you, how did you know that he was the right one for you? Okay, okay. Well, um, 
we met, um, that's why I started to say my freshman year in college. Um, I was dating someone in high school, but I didn't want to go to college with a boyfriend. Because oh. I had been, you know, I had some older, you know, my best friend, her Gotta brother. Um, they, they knew the, the, I guess, uh, the way around campus. And they were, I remember them sitting us around the table at our graduation party, and they were saying, um, don't do this, do this, no. just the rules, right. just the rules. Keep your run down. And of course, I went to a predominantly white high school. And I was going to an HBCU. Yay! South Carolina State University. Shout out to all the HBCUs. Shout out to the HBCUs. So it was going to be culture shock for me mm-hmm. in general. Mm-hmm. So they were just doing what older brothers would do. For sure. And prepare me. For sure. So, you know, I, you know, freshmen get there like a week or two earlier mm-hmm. before everyone else. Mm-hmm. So they can get acclimated to the campus right. and everything. So my husband was what we call student orientation student. Mm-hmm. He would greet the freshmen, make sure they were okay, mm-hmm. if they had any questions, they would come and see him. Well, my roommate had met him mm-hmm. already. Mm-hmm. And she was like, oh, you've got to meet this guy. He's so funny. Ooh. He's this. Ooh. I was not looking for anything. Absolutely not. It's, it's freshman year. You want to say, you want to make bread. Yes, I wanted to meet all the guys. Absolutely. You knew people were And we were on the phone probably for about an hour. Uh-huh. And I, I swear, I 
laughed, and I was like, oh my gosh, what is going on? Mm. And I, I, I just felt different. Mm. One, he's not my type. Mm. Well, I mean, he, of course, over time, mm-hmm. but initially, mm-hmm. he would not have been the guy that I would have been attracted mm-hmm. to. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we got to know each other. Right. And, of course, his story is I had on this outfit with my biker shorts and, <laughs> and my shirt tied up on the side. Biker shorts are still full. Yes, of outfit. Yes. That's a look. Yes. That's a look. Yes. All right. If you didn't wear biker shorts as an outfit, you, you just came in, came on in when leggings became a thing. Yes. You have done yourself the service. Yes. So I had my biker shorts and we were behind one of the buildings on campus talking. Oh, and, I didn't know what you're supposed to say. <laughs> Not yet, not yet, oh, not yet. Not yet. Okay, okay. So, you know, we, this is when, you know, we're still in the recording stage. Yes. So we're talking. And, and, and you courted back then. Yes. Oh, yes. continue. And so I remember distinctly telling him, my friends say that I'm naive. Mm. Because I was told that a lot. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, the type of high school I went to, I was very sheltered mm-hmm. growing up. Mm-hmm. Um, I had... I didn't drive in high school. I I pretty much went to school, went home, went to work. You was a real teenager. I was. We don't. We don't get that. We we don't get those a lot. (laughs) I mean, I, I, I worked ever since I was sixteen. I worked. You know what I mean. I worked too, but my mom sheltered. You know what I mean. Yeah, but I still because you didn't drive. I didn't exactly. Yeah, I didn't drive. I was crashing cars. No, see, but because (laughs) the school I went to Mm -hmm. was like twenty minutes from where I lived. Mm And my mom taught down the street when I went to school. Right. So I was like, okay, after you come to practice, you catch the bus, mm-hmm. and you come to my school, mm-hmm. and then we go home. Right. And then I can change, and I take you to work. And that's it. That. <laughs> and, that, and that's what it was. Period. Yeah. So it was either that or public transportation. And that wasn't happening. And yeah. So it was like, okay. So that's all I did. Okay. You know, and of course, mm-hmm. the different activities and all that stuff. So I came across as being very... Un, um, unaware of mm-hmm. my surroundings. Right. So you you trusted him enough to tell him that your friend said that you are naive. naive. What is that? He was like, he said his ears kind of perked up, mm. and he was ready to hit and run, uh, as they say. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, he was like, oh, it'll be easy to get this one. right. Right. And then move on. Right, 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 right. So that was Damn, exactly. y'all be praying on this. Right. Yes. Yes. You got you, you got you a nice girl. Uh-huh. She wasn't she wasn't a city girl or nothing. Why you want why you don't hit and run a city girl? Yeah. Why exactly. you why you got this one nice mess, girl? Yeah. And I say all the time, I could have been one of those tragic stories mm-hmm. that you hear mm-hmm. that guys did you wrong mm-hmm. in college and mm-hmm. just kind of mess you up and, you, wild and, and, yeah, and you just go buck wild, right. you know, and because, you know, back when our parents were younger, mm-hmm. speak on it. they went to school to find their husbands. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or something or was arranged. Or something was arranged. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you did go to school to yeah, find Yeah, but that was not my intention. Mm-hmm. But it happened to be that way, and we ended up being college sweethearts. Oh. Um, it was probably Maybe a year, like my going into my sophomore mm-hmm, year, mm-hmm. that I was like, okay, he mm-hmm. might be the, the one, right. mm-hmm. you know? Okay, he, he might be the guy. Okay, going into your senior year, my sophomore, did, year. sophomore year. Yeah. Wow. So did um, how old are you as a sophomore in college? Nineteen. 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 Twenty. Yeah, you might even get twenty-one yet. Mm-hmm. Okay, so did something happen? Um, or did you just have a, a, a realization or nothing happened between us, mm-hmm. but it was, I, th- I needed that year of growth mm-hmm. at the school. And when I say an HBCU provides more of a real life Experience. education yeah. 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 than anything mm-hmm. you can mention. I mean, I had to grow up and learn a lot about myself mm-hmm. in that freshman year. And I think I, I needed that yeah, yeah. to realize who I was. Yeah. As a person trying to just, figure out who, just said something. Who, oh, who I was. Oh, 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 hold, hold that right there. Hold okay. that right there because I'm coming for that. Okay. Okay. But now we know how y'all how y'all met mm-hmm. and we got an inkling of how you knew he was the right one for you and when. Real quick, I totally forgot that. 
we have such a diverse audience, everybody might not know what an HBCU is. Yes. <laughs> okay, an HBCU is a historically black college and university. Um, you know, there are hundreds of them throughout the United States, and they were institutions that were created specifically um, for African Americans um, during the segregation time. So we could still get our education um, as well. You know, a lot of you know universities um, specialize in certain things. You have some HBCUs that are for liberal arts. You have some that are for you know, if you want your medical degree, if you specialize in technology, you know, there are specialized fields that, but of course, nowadays it just has pretty much everything, but pretty much, you know, you know. yeah, yeah. And, and I, I know that, you know, it, it may be crazy for some people because they may say, well, you know, black people uh, fought to, you know, be equal to be able to go to school with everybody and not be segregated. True indeed. However, I feel like, uh, you know, I don't, I don't have any kids, so not, not any shade to anyone raising kids, but a lot of people have socially awkward kids and socially, and they grow into socially awkward adults because they haven't been around a diverse group of people. Um, I definitely, uh, I went to private school, public school, uh, went to predominantly white schools, I went to predominantly black schools, I've been to schools in the suburbs, I've been to schools in the hood. But the black college experience is unmatched. When you're at that um, uh, pivotal, is that the right word for this moment? Pivotal yes, moment? Yes. We're in a pivotal so, moment mm -hmm. uh, of and your life. Yes. Seeing you're people, discovering who you are. Yes. Seeing people that look like you uh, come from the same background as you or different backgrounds, you struggle. You know, the, uh, it's so much to, uh, to relate to, it's so much to uh, people to grow with. And, being surrounded with someone who could potentially be your other half. Like you're, I feel like being in a classroom and seeing the intelligence of a strong black man next to you yeah. is, is, is something that it's you, something. you ain't, you ain't going to get that in other places. No. And, you know, going, you know, out, outside, you know, on set and seeing other people that look like you and going to parties that look like you, it's, it, it's different. Um, yeah. And you, in college, now you grow into because a lot of your friends from uh, uh, elementary and high school don't go with you into they their adult life. life. You know what I'm saying? In college, you you, you keep meet a lot people. of your friends. Yeah. yeah so I, mean, I was fortunate enough. My best friend, we went to college mm -hmm, together. Mm -hmm. We went started in middle school. We met in middle school, and mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, I still I still got my, my middle school best. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. we we were. And actually, um, I went to FAMU for a little bit for people who don't, who don't know. My financial aid wasn't right. And that's how I ended up at TCC, which was the community college in Tallahassee. But I still had all of my um, affiliations with FAMU. Like I, um, I did choreography for the Diamonds basketball you know, team. And both of my roommates were uh, students at, at FAM. You know what I mean? So I still received a lot of the uh, experience that I would have not received that at TCC. See, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's a it's a blessing. So I just wanted to point that out right quick for those yeah. who don't know what an HBCU is. Yeah. All right, now back to ecstasy. So she started talking about herself. You saw that? So she, she said, I, I need to do this stuff myself. So I wanted to ask you, because I know that people go through this. So for those who don't know, ecstasy is a mother, okay, uh, and a wife. And she basically was involved in her marriage, of course, while she started to uh, transition out of her 20s into her 30s. And for those of you who don't know, wow, for those of you who haven't hit 30 yet, mm -hmm. that late 20s going into your 30s, mm -hmm. you it's turn into a whole new bitch. Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like who, who are you? Yes. And, and it's hard for people to go with you. And a lot of people lose their relationships or yeah. lose their friends or lose their family because they are in the process of finding yeah. yourself and growing yes. and everybody doesn't grow together mm -hmm. okay so ecstasy yes how did you manage to because we know you ain't find yourself at 19. oh no okay mm -hmm. how did you manage to find yourself like you yes. and what makes you happy yes amidst being in a monogamous marriage and also having a child okay. also being a mother 
Yeah. Okay, so give yeah. us that because I feel like that was around the time that Vertical Joe's came into your life. Yes. All right. So tell, tell the people about this. Yeah. So around that time, um, I had danced. I, I was um, on the flag team in college. And yes, yes. I got a flag. I you playing on the flag. I the flag. Okay. Um, so I was, and I had had my daughter. Um, she was probably about five, six at the time. And I was still learning mm. for that feeling that I got when I danced on the dance floor. Because, you know, okay. having, not saying that I was an attention seeker, but being on an HBCU band mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. is an experience. Band is like Even no matter, even if you were holding the, 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 the banner, you mm-hmm. were on the band. Period. Okay, and people knew you were on the band. Period. And just the prestige that comes along with being on an HBCU band, yes. traveling, yes, and performing, yes, it's, it's it a elite position. It, it was a high mm-hmm. that I didn't know I needed, and I was longing for it. So I, I was searching for something to still give me that high. Because by that time, you know, I was pretty stable my daughter was, you know, in school, she played in kindergarten and everything. So I was I was like, okay, now I can focus on me. Right. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I took a class, my cousin mm-hmm. took me to a class and I had a class with Quiet Sada. <laughs> and what was this? This was um It had been a million years ago before Vertical Bells. Yes. Okay. Yes, it was. Circa two thousand seven, two thousand eight maybe. Two thousand Oh my gosh. Yes. Okay, so Sister Claire. By the tattoo I have on my side. Ooh, so I got my tattoo too. Got a big tattoo. That's when Ecstasy was born. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, okay. Ecstasy was born 2006. Wilder. Uh huh. So um, I got the, that feeling from taking your class mm. that I had when I was on the band. And then afterwards, you know, we're putting on our clothes and everything, and I see the most beautiful woman in the world. My pole mama, who she came to mm-hmm. showcase. Showcase! Shout out to Showcase! Showcase! Showcase, Woo! showcase was thick. Mm-hmm. She had some thick thighs. Okay, got that booty thick up. And she knew how to move her body. Mm-hmm. She That's was Jamaica. confident. She was like everything. And when I saw her, and I was like, like you were saying earlier, representation matters. Mm-hmm. And you know, granted, when you think of poles, you see the slim women and everything. But I saw someone that looked like me. Right. And I was like, I want that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I went home, showed my husband a few moves that I learned the sexy up. Sexy up! I showed him, and I said, they have a series starting in two weeks. And he was like, I'm Ooh. Because I think he saw how happy it made me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You, had your, you had your stage again. I had my stage again. Mm-hmm. Even though I wasn't performing, mm-hmm. it still gave me that high mm-hmm. that I was looking for. Mm-hmm. So during that time, you know, of course, you know, we have our alter ego right here. Right. I was like, well, how do I want to be seen? And what do I want to represent? Yes. I perform? Come on. And that's how, you know, ecstasy. Of course, my name is spelled X, the number two in the C, in the letter C. Because mm-hmm. um, I, I wanted people to feel like they were on a high. Mm-hmm. And they were just... The same high that you felt. Yeah, the same high that I felt. I wanted people to feel the same way. But I didn't want to spell it like the word ecstasy. Right. So Drugs are bad. Drugs are bad. But and I'm but, a good drug. But, but I'm a good drug. The experience is good. Hello. So... I was a math major in college, mm-hmm. so that's how the two came about. I didn't know you was a math major. I was a math major. Got my BS in mathematics. Look at me. Yes. Learn your stuff today. <laughs> yes. And the C is the first letter of my government name. Yeah. So, yes. So, that's how. I love it. Yeah, so that's how my husband, he helped me with that. So, that's how. Okay. That's how I got the spelling. Okay. Yeah. So, so you started to, um, to poll and tap into your sexy what was it like um, for your husband and your family creating space for you to transition into 
ecstasy, the woman from your college you? They didn't understand um, what I was going through. Um, they said I was being selfish mm. um, and that the studio always came before me. Wow. Yikes. Yeah. I, I, I know some of the polar audits can relate. Yeah. Like we're we're in here at two in the morning and people don't understand what we're in here doing. You couldn't be pole dancing that late. Yeah. So so at first it was cute, basically. Yeah. <laughs> he thought it was, I think he thought it was gonna be a phase. A phase. Okay. And I was gonna take a couple classes, run a couple moves. Right. And be done. Right. Right. But, but then, then it was like, yeah, I'm in it. Oh, yeah. we got a show. Yeah. Oh, we got this. Yeah. Oh, we got this. Yeah. Oh, the studio needs this. Yeah. I'm going here for the studio. I'm going to the studio. I'm going. It was always I'm going to the studio. Yeah. Going to the studio. Because the studio was giving me, it was a. I was myself. Mm -hmm. I, when I walked through the doors of the studio, I was not blonde. Mm. I was not white. Mm -hmm. I was me. The studio and gave you a safe space. It was my safe space. Yes. Yeah. So. It hits the professional woman's playground. That's that's what the studio was supposed to be. Um, but I, I have seen that a, a lot of times people end up stressed because they got to pick between the studio, which the studio isn't just the studio. The studio is your safe space for your uh, expression, and it's not it's not being a, attention seeking. But I I feel like as women, a lot of times people don't understand. Like we need attention we need we need to be nurtured you know what i'm saying we're like flowers like we need we need sunshine no we're like cats we need to be pet y'all stop stop but we're okay when we're by ourselves we're okay cats, cats cool by yes. themselves but when people pet them they hurt yeah you see what i'm saying yeah. and cats to me are always putting on mm -hmm. like they they stretch and they do they're they're always putting on yeah. but you know they're they're happy but you have to give them space mm -hmm. to to, to be them happy. yeah and when we start having to into these boxes of well, I can't be myself because I have to be your wife, or yeah. I can't be myself because I have to be your mom. It, it causes stress on a lot of women, and that's how they end up in the studio. And then people don't understand how uh, sensual movement um, helps people, or even just getting back strong, getting fit. Like after you have a child, mm -hmm. people come in here and they and they can't even do a pull up. Yeah. So to be able to climb to the top of the pole is it's it's amazing. amazing. It's like, oh my gosh, because I have zero <laughs> of yeah. body strength. Yeah, yeah. My legs have always been my strongest yeah. part of my body. Yeah. And I was like, and for me, like you said, for yeah. me to be able to climb the pole, I right. was like, what? Right. <laughs> you know, so. So so let me ask you a, a, a more personal question. Mm -hmm. Um, What was the toughest moment of this transition of finding the balance of finding yourself and still being the ideal wife and still being the ideal mom that that you can share that's not too personal. Like what? Like was that? Was it? Was it hard? Did you just create space and say, "Okay, do your thing," or was there a struggle there? Or? There was definitely some struggle there. You know, um, they may have wanted to do something, and I was like, "Okay." But after I come from the studio, mm. um, and it just became a, a very a, a hot button. Right. Um, and it was so they felt like you choosing the studio over them. Yeah. As, they, as yeah. opposed to you choosing yourself so, over them. Yeah. But then that's it turned they being selfish. Yeah, exactly. And they didn't see it mm. as me choosing myself. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, my husband always said, I, you know, you need to be happy. I can't your happiness but I think at the time he didn't realize that the studio was, was helping was you. helping me be happy mm -hmm. and then and I, I can't take care of myself how you gonna take care of anybody else? how am I gonna take care of you guys mm -hmm. if I'm not where I need to be mm -hmm. I, I think and I think that's you know a part of why I'm able to keep everything as you like to say in balance in balance <laughs> ah, I'm about to talk about that continue um, I have to make sure I prioritize myself. So yes, in a case, I am selfish because I need to make sure I'm okay. Because if I'm not functioning at my peak level, mm -hmm. then everyone else around me is going to suffer. That's right. So I need to make sure I'm nurturing myself. Mm -hmm. I'm feeding myself mm -hmm. the nutrients that I need mm -hmm. in order to be what you need. Right. And some people don't make it past this um, 
um, transition. You know what I mean? Like this breaks a lot of a lot of marriages. Yeah. Like the, the same way that we've had clients come in happily married, we've had clients come in happily married and leave divorced. Yeah. And totally happy divorced. We, you know, we've had clients come in divorced and, and leave happily married. You know what I mean? Or people come in uh, single, divorced, whatever, you know what I mean? Uh, leave. They like a whole nother uh, species. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and and nothing's wrong with any of it. You know what I mean? Like you, you come, you, it's bigger than, uh, than dance. You know what I mean? Um, uh, it's dance therapy. You know what I mean? So that's pretty cool. Okay, so X. You survived potentially getting broke up on yeah, because you, you you out here picking a studio over the family, right? But you made it. Yeah. So your story uh, resonates with so many women. You know, tell us twenty one years of marriage. I I want to say that X is one of the most balanced people that I know. Um, she's someone that I, you know, aspire to, uh, be more like, um, you know, I'm a bit of a workaholic. Um, my friends are so important to me. Um, X always has a, this dope balance. Like, I'm like, girl, you want to go to lunch on 29? She'll say, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm having dinner with my Sarah's and Naya has a, a an event, but I, I can, I can link up with you at 7 p.m. And you know, and she'll be on time. She doesn't drop the ball. She remembers people's, you know, birthdays. Uh, you know, if 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 it's like different things going on, she just always is balanced. And the only time she seems imbalanced is when she's not right. That's if she correct. if she's not feeling good, everybody else is gonna fall to the wayside or whatever it is. And then she's devastated that she's out of whack, and and she totally moves different, and she's not a happy individual. So. I know that within this balance that that definitely has to be a strong foundation in her in her marriage because if she's able to keep us happy, you know, without missing a beat and keep him happy and keep her kids happy and keep her job happy, like, uh, she's basically some sort of superhero, you know what I mean? So I want X to tell us three tips, three tips to turning a six month, <laughs> I just met your ass into a 21 year experience and still wanting to experience that person at 20 years, 21 years. Because most people, a lot of times after 21 years, they want to experience somebody else, okay? And there's nothing wrong with that. But I, I, I really want for you to share those tips with us because we've been doing all of these things. If you, if you don't know, um, we've been featured on uh, Mother Funders, um, that uh, Bravo show. They did um, Couples Lap Dance. Um, we also um, have a project that's coming out that I can't tell you about, but it drops really, 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 really soon. If it hasn't already, by the time we drop this podcast, um, where we're basically helping uh, this uh, relationship. We also are featured on the Seven Little Johnsons, in which the, um, the couple from Seven Little Johnsons came to play with us and we do our couples lap dance classes regularly just because we want the other halves to stop complaining y'all yeah. bring that ass to the studio see why oh, we're having so much see, fun see why we're having so much fun see why we come home happy hello yes. hello so ecstasy yes. three things three 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 I, I was going to say five, but oh, no, that's but not three, because we're not about to get all the extra business <laughs> like that. Okay, three things. Um, I would say definitely um, make time for each other. What? Make time. Make time. Say make more time. about that. So um, I do, you know, because as individuals, we do a lot of things. Um, you definitely want to make, just like you make time to go work out or you make time to eat, you know, make time to say hi to your partner. I know he would always fuss when I went to work and I wouldn't text him to let him know I got there. Mm -hmm. That's just his peace of mind. Mm -hmm. little, Some, yeah, little things, something I hated doing, mm -hmm. but I'm like, you know what? If why you doing it? You feel like you're shaking in or something? Or? Yeah, I'm like, why? But, 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 I got to work. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I got there, yeah. I'm here. Mm -hmm. But he said he is something he needs to know. Okay. 
and stuff like that. Okay, I said that that would be number two. Mm -hmm. Two things that make your party. Okay. Find the things. Two. That, that's Find the things that make your partner happy. Oh my. And it was something small for me, mm. but it was a big deal for him. Mm. So I was like, okay. Even if I just text, I'm here. Ooh. I, oh. I, that that just made his day. He oh. was he was okay. Oh. You had yeah. that. He just needed to know. He said, and I'm like, why? He's like, I just need to know you got your work today because he's a protector. Girl, he's as, a as, as I mentioned, yeah. yeah. So he said he said, oh, he's such a short person. Oh. That time, okay. That sounds like a guaranteed booty rub when I get <laughs> home. <laughs> <laughs> and or perhaps something else. Yeah. So, so you just need to know those little things that your partner appreciates. You know, know their love language. I love it. Is it okay? Woo! Oh, oh, we go. Oh, oh, damn. Okay. Well, she she hit us so hard. So quickly, tell us about the the, the love language. Yeah, love language. Yes, 
to the marriage, but your children or any children produced from the marriage must remain Catholic. So Naya, what Catholic is? Beautiful daughter. Yes. Thank gorgeous. You. Thank you. Just uh, getting into college and starting her love journey. Um, this would be a deal breaker for a lot of people, but how did you, yes. how did you, because cause mind you, it'll be different if you, if you met him and he was 35, you know how the 35 year olds be acting, <laughs> you know we don't be playing, no, I'm saying we, like I'm, I'm over yeah. 35, but yeah. when I was 35, if I had something along the lines of this is, this is my religion, this is your religion, I met someone and our relations didn't align, it would be a deal breaker. But you already in it. How did you, how did y'all do this? Well, I continued to practice my religion. You didn't lose your religion? I didn't, I didn't okay. lose it. I continued. My daughter went to church. We leave him in bed. Hello. See you later. And, and, not, and not tripping. And not, and not and, pressuring and him. Exactly. And, but he would come to church, like, if there were special events going on, like if she was dancing, but mind you, my Catholic church is not like other Catholic churches. <laughs> we have drums. Huh. And we have dancers. You turn and, up, Catholic yeah, church. yeah. We turn up, so that's why he didn't mind coming to is, my is church. Is the church black? Yes. Oh, that's well, cool. the church I was raised in was a black Catholic church. Wow, that's which are cool. very rare. So mm -hmm. I grew up in a black Catholic church, mm. and so but we were more of the traditional. Okay. But when I came here to Atlanta, I visited a couple churches. And then I found my home church, mm. and I was like, I'm in love. Mm. Because it was a perfect match of the spirituality that I was looking for, plus the traditional I love that. religious aspects that I was looking for as well. You know, I, I love that. Because one, one thing I, I have to say about um, sometimes like overly religious people, they can get so pushy mm -hmm. about you, know, you, you converting or wanting to uh, take on. I think that something that I've noticed about you and Scott is that y'all, they're their own individual person, yes. you know, and, 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 you know, sometimes um, people get into these real interdependent relationships where uh, now y'all share the same circles, y'all share the same friends, y'all yes. like one person, y'all like uh, Kim Ye, yeah. and then, then what happens when y'all break up, exactly. you know what I'm saying, kind of thing, exactly. so I love that Scott is his own person, like, he has his own, uh, net, you know, network. He's um, he's in his motorcycle club. You know, what I'm saying he does his thing. You know, X has her own friends, her own thing, her own uh, identity. You know, what I'm saying like even you know with um, especially like I, I I rarely see them on like each other's social media. We're not friends on social media. <laughs> 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 that's another guess, bro. Social media. Ah! I'm, like, I'm like, I rarely see them. Okay. Because we're not friends on But social media. Break, break it down till it can't be broke down. Okay. No more. One, <laughs> one, it, went, it, it started over I, because the tourists and me are very stubborn. It started over a football game. I am a the Redskins. Red. Yeah, well, it's no longer the Redskins. Huh. We're the Washington football team now. Oh, oh the Washington football, football team. team. Oh, was Redskins racist? Dang! So the name changed. Wow! <laughs> so you what know, do you do with all your Redskins merch now? You still I, wear it? No, no, I don't. Wow! I don't even know that. No, uh, yeah. So it's. Yeah, it's those racist. racist. Yeah. Hi. Okay, continue. Yeah. So it started off with football. He's a cow girl fan, cowboy fan, and I'm a Washington fan. So of course, we have to meet each other twice. Every season, uh -huh. so and, I'm and, and neither one of you are backing down about it. Exactly. Okay. I'm, we can't watch the team, the game in the same room. I have to be in one room. He has to be in another. And I think this particular time, my team lost, and he had said something on social media, and it pissed me off. So I unfriended him. Mm. And of course, being the comedian that he is, folks started commenting and started tagging me. And I was getting irritated because of team lives. Mm. So I was like, unfriend. Mm. And he was like, you not gonna, no, I'm not going to be your friend. And this has been like five years. Wow. And we're not friends on social media. How do you think that, you think this is good for a relationship? Um, because one, I see him every day. Mm. Why do you, I need to be on your page? We communicate. Okay. I don't feel 
as if I need to check his page mm -hmm. every day to see what he's talking about. One, I have eyes and ears. If somebody goes crazy, you know, you know better. Somebody is going to twenty one years. Me. You know it's, better. Yeah, it's going to get back to me later. Um, you know, of course, you know, I was like, I just, and I'm not on Facebook like that. So Facebook I'm like, boring. you can have Facebook. Okay, so she owned Instagram. I'm on Instagram. Period. <laughs> so, um, was it a weird transition? Because when y'all started, what was our MySpace? <laughs> well, I didn't even do MySpace. So the social media came in, and and you know, X has some sexy content on the social media. It's different when um, all the sexy content was just in the studio and there wasn't social media. Um, did, did, did he give you any troubles when when you transition? No. Oh, no. he he doesn't. He He's, he's so cool. He's like, I know she's coming home to me. Period. And so he's like, they can book. He's, he's, he's that type. That's mine. That's mine. And, you know, for other, you know, individuals, men, women, look at me. He's mm. like, yeah, that's me. That's mine. Right? Okay. That's I, I mean. yeah, it's mine. <laughs> he's okay. like, I know she's coming home. To me. Okay. Period. So he doesn't okay. worry about any of that period okay it's, it's, and i think that's you know making sure your partner's secure hello you probably need to be secure in your relationship right. period it's like, like literally okay. 21 years every body part of hers has been in your mouth <laughs> <laughs> what is he talking about <laughs> okay y'all speaking of body parts through your mouth i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and ask for everybody else and everybody else including my multiple personalities, ex, ex, mm -hmm. that you can share that you can't disclose, friend. Mm -hmm. We need to know mm -hmm. the sex tip. Oh. 20, 21 years, you're doing something nasty, <laughs> filthy, crazy, frisky, mindless. Now you gotta like share it, share it with this, but how, how does one yeah, you ain't gotta tell us your, your sex yeah. trick. No, no. Cause I know you got a sex <laughs> trick. All the quiet chicks that sit, that sit just like this. You see this? The hand crossed, the, the, who sit just like this. They nasty, y'all. They nasty. But we need this, the culture, the culture of single women. Cause let me tell you something. Married women, I, I think outside of the studio and other places that, like the studio embraces uh, all women. Like a lot of, uh, there was a lot of a divide, especially in Atlanta for a long time between like uh, strippers, you know, and like regular chicks, you know what I'm saying? Or like, um, you know, uh, celebrity chicks and like regular chicks, like people be acting like we're not all women at the end of the day, right? And that we all can um, take tips from each other. You know what I'm saying? Porn star tricks is one thing, yeah. but if you are with someone for 21 years, it's a mental. Not, I can't blind myself out, but it's it's a mental something that's going on. You're you're screwing this person's brain at this point. So I I, I want to know what dirty, filthy, nasty physical elements are tuning into this mental element that's making them want to feel on you for 21 years. Where's your ring? Oh, it's at home. Oh, girl, I need you to bring the rock next time. What is, why is you playing with us? Well, I knew I, when I come to the studio, that's another thing. I don't Dang, the studio don't get the ring, y'all. <laughs> it's big and frosty, by the way. Okay, X, yeah. sex tips. I don't care. I don't care. Well, sex tips. The thing is this: you have to. Be, I met him my freshman year, so I wasn't that experienced. That's okay. He probably and liked that. Yeah, I think because you know um, he was, you know, uh, in his early twenties, mid twenties. You make me feel like a lush, but I'm sorry. Okay, have a sip. Because you got to the time off again. Okay, carry on. Um, so I was still figuring out who I was sexually. Oh my God, I can only imagine. Yeah, so he, you know, helped me explore and figure out kind of what I liked, what I didn't like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He was patient. Yeah, he was That's 
nice. And from there, we just kind of learned together because after a while, like when we were in college, women didn't talk about sucking dick. Right. Period. Period. So it was like, it was a lot of gaps. A lot of gaps with that. What's that? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's nasty. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't something that was. It was frowned upon, especially for black women. Yes. Especially for black women. Yes. So, you know, being introduced, it's like, you know, then when you experience it, it's like, oh. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it was like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And then allowing me to experience and figure out what I enjoy mm -hmm. and figure out what he enjoys. Mm -hmm. And then just trying to, of course, we're not freaky every time. Right, 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 right. You know, right. But now we were, you know, even now we're to the point where it's like, okay. 21 years. Yeah. It's very yeah. You probably have yeah. And then it's like, how do we, now we're trying to figure out how to re it back up. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going through now. We're going in that phase of, okay, now that we're, you know, we're on the second half of our, you know, Hello. life, you know, he's in his 50s, mm -hmm. he's in my mid 40s, mm -hmm. so we're like,
and her husband as we celebrate um, couples, couples just being together more. So we definitely invite you couples to join us either in studio. Um, we also have our couples classes that will be going on in Houston and we'll also be online with the couples classes, all right? So it's gonna be really cool. It's an interactive uh, dance class with Ecstasy and her amazing husband, Special K, so that you can join us. One. Two, I got to get the shoe cam up inspired by no other than Wendy Williams because I love her. X, put that boot up and show us what you're working with, baby. Oh, they can't see you. I'm going to go to the side. There it go. Isn't that gorgeous? Okay, these are one of our shoes from DJ Fashion King that we wear for uh, lap riders. I'm wearing London Fog today. I, I got on this thigh high. We got to get our shoe cam together for the podcast. Yes. Um, X mentioned the sexy up earlier. Oh, Okay, now let's not knock the whole set over, but can, uh -huh. can we get sexy up? Can we get sexy up? Okay, here she goes. Oh, oh shit, we got that whole set over. We said we're going to knock it down. It's you okay, we're going to get it back. We're going to get it back. Okay, give it to us. All right, so I think you got to be, okay, ooh, look, come on, thighs. Ooh, here okay. it come, here it come, here it come. Okay. All right, so here it goes. You got to squat down, and then you poke your booty up. Yeah! Okay. <laughs> And let me tell you something. Uh, she got her whole tuition at Vertical Joe's sponsored <laughs> off of that one drink. Okay, we winning. Okay, we winning. We won. Um, before we go, XC, I want to tell you again. Love you. Appreciate you. Um, everybody's giving you all of your flowers right now because you are amazing. Um, do you have anything that you want to say to the single ladies out there that are looking for Mr. or Mrs. Wright? Um, I, I guess, ooh, it's been so long since I've been <laughs> single. Um, I, I wasn't looking. Um, I was just being, being having a regular day, you know, but definitely make sure that you know who you are, um, so you're prepared to present your best self mm -hmm. to whomever comes your way. Because I would hate for the perfect person mm -hmm. to come along and you're still trying to gather yourself mm -hmm. together and that opportunity passes you by. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you are your whole self. And I think once that happens, then, it all falls into place. Then everything falls into place. Okay. And what do you have to say to the couples that are at, you know, their, you know, 10-year, 15-year, 20-year mark that are trying to figure out how to keep things flavorful? Um, hang in there. Um, you know, they, I always hear, you know, other couples, you know, that are in conversation. What's the key? Everyone always says communication. Yes, that's important well but I, I think the the big thing is knowing how to love your partner how to love yourself how to love your partner um and like i was saying before know what your partner needs and making sure not saying you have to cater to their every whim and bow down to them but marriage is compromise mm. and you can't be willing to grow together if someone's not willing to give into something mm. that you know they they want or that they need, but make sure you're happy. Mm -hmm. Don't compromise and be unhappy. Mm -hmm. If the compromise is going to make you unhappy, then that's not where you want to be. Wow. Period. Um, anything you want to say? Any shout outs? Anybody you want to? Um, of course, I'm going to shout out my lovely cousin. Yay! Yes, love you. Um, he definitely um, is living up to the protector, mm. provider, mm. you know, all of those things. Even though my mom was worried <laughs> about him you know, in the beginning, mm -hmm. but you know, he has definitely lived up to. You know, I didn't have the both parents in the mm -hmm. household, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but. You know, and neither did he, but together, I think we have figured out how to become that ideal 
image of, in our minds, mm -hmm. at least, of what mm -hmm. a good um, role model uh, marriage would look like. And hopefully, we've done that for our daughter. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, sweetie. Hey, boo. Hey, Maria. Hey, hey boy. <laughs> Your mama famous. <laughs> um, she talks about Bernie and Joe, too. And she's like, DJ mm -hmm. Yeah, she's a DJ baby. Um, you know, just hoping that, you know, the, along the way, she has been able to pick up mm -hmm. um, good things, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. about how a strong relationship mm -hmm. needs to be. Um, shout out to the Vertical Joe's team. Team DJ! 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 Team um, my team, a vertically voluptuous. Hello, BB in the building. My BB team. Period. Yes, love you all. I really want to spend a special shout out to all my pole kids, my mm -hmm. pole babies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, your support um, for coming to take my class, wanting to experience a part of me and what I bring to this table. Um, I thank you um, for all of that. Um, spin Vixen, I don't think we'll ever die. <laughs> never, <laughs> never, ever, um, ever, ever, ever. We call Spin Vixen on demand soon, too. Yes. Like, we just got to. You can just do it wherever you are. So um, I want to thank, over the years, everyone for their support. Even the advanced kids, you all still come back to see me, and you are still in my classes and supporting me. So I thank you. Um, watching you grow. Um, has been the joy of me being a instructor here. All the people I have met through Vertical Joe's, the experiences that I've had, mm -hmm. being a part of the team, I think has enriched, enriched me as a person. Mm -hmm. So I thank you for entrusting me to um, help you with your vision. So thank you oh, so much. Thank you for gathering um, me so much. <laughs> I'm creative, y'all. Yes, she is. She the is. people around me are organized. They, yes. they, they, <laughs> they gather. They gather me still. Yeah. So um, I, I just, this vertical Joseph has brought a lot to my life. I think without vertical Joseph, I don't know where or who I would be. Mm -hmm. Um, at you know, at this stage in my life. So mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. everyone that has come through those doors, just for everything. So it's, it's a wonderful experience. I can't wait to experience many more. I think I'm kind of transitioning into more of the teaching the teacher. Right, right. Ma level. Master trainer energy. Master trainer energy Absolutely. now. Because my husband's always asking me when I'm going to retire. Ooh, you're a trainer <laughs> like, now. Never. But, you know, um, yeah, I'm, I'm finding as I'm growing as an individual, mm -hmm. finding my new role. Right. So ladies are coming in. Yeah, pole is coming in. It's a natural yeah, progression. Yeah, exactly, grow. exactly. Mm -hmm. So just now letting everyone that I've had a chance to teach and watching them grow and seeing them be successful, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, my job is done. Mm -hmm. Now it's time to teach some more. Nice. So, yeah. I love it, bud. Um, lashes are these uh, are these from yes, yeah, sweet samba. Sweet samba. I'm so jealous. Wow. Yes, beautiful. yes, one of our clients here, Vertical Joe's, owns it to samba. Oh, my goodness. Oh, two. She owns two. So. She owns two. Yeah. Shout out to I'm gonna say Delight Chastity. Chastity. <laughs> Shout out to Chastity. Yeah. Uh, and Naisha, I just saw Naisha on, on the on my flight to Tijuana. Okay. Yes, yeah, she was headed to Cabo. I think. Okay. Shout out to okay. Naisha um, from Sweet Samba Midtown and Alpharetta. Mm -hmm. Beautiful business, women-owned business, black-owned business. Go yes. get your lashes. Yeah. Go get your coochie yeah. wax. I have my microblades there. Microblades. Oh, girl, yeah. that's a whole other conversation. Yeah. Y'all, she keep I keep a semi beat because I don't do makeup. Oh my goodness! So I I thank the Chastity and her team oh. for keeping my face on the yeah. semi beat because you never know what's gonna happen here at Vertical Joe. Period. Walk in the door and it's like, hey, can you yeah. Like, and oh, that's what's down there. Okay, yeah. So Period. must be prepared. At all times. <laughs> so y'all make sure y'all comment, like, subscribe, tune into uh, all of our. Uh, actually, just turn your post notifications on. Because I don't know what we're doing or when we're doing it, but we're doing everything and we're doing the most and you need to be a part of all of it, okay? So thank you so much for watching. Y'all make sure y'all yes. follow Ecstasy, um, her handle. 
It's at C Thomas823 on Instagram. It'll also be in the um, description link as well. Y'all make sure y'all join us for our couples classes. And if you ain't got no boo, it's okay. Come play. Find out more about yourself and you'll be a more uh, enticing um, uh, catch for your other half. But keep working on you until you find who is uh, who is right for you, okay? okay? So with that said, cheers. Cheers. All right. And we'll talk to y'all later. Bye. Bye.